Hi all, good morning, good evening friends. Welcome to Career Stock. My name is Deepika. I'm working as a Scrum Master. In today's session, I'll be talking about a case study. This case study, I found it in a LinkedIn and it is shared by Chandan Lal Patri. Link to the case study is shared in the slide. Please do refer for more information. I would like to thank Chandan for this case study because while I am working with this case study, it has given me better understanding on the migration process. Also, thank you so much for uh, your help and feedback, Sunan, because of which I am able to share my thought process in this case study. Also, friends, I would like to hear from other Scrum Master what will be your approach with respect to this case study when it is it can be any case studies when you are uh, attending or giving in, uh, any interview. So please do share and give the comments so that I can also adapt to it. Love to hear your suggestions and input. In this slide, I'll be reading out what the case study is all about. Company Power Auto was under tremendous pressure from its legacy power products. The product is already a cash cow product and dominating in European market. Expanding rapidly into USA, with the current product portfolio, this company cannot expand it into the USA market. The product maintenance code cost is becoming very high. Existing customer bases are very high, but with the outdated technology the product was built on, it, uh, it was no more extensible. Demanding customer were asking more and more features. The company has development center in Germany with 35 team members and testing center in India with 20 team members. The product was 20 plus years old with many legacy outdated technologies and few of the original team members are still working with the product. Top management has decided to develop similar type of product with cutting edge latest technologies in two to three years timeline. The expanding market demands fastest product with the latest features and shortest feedback cycle. Company as team members who are working with company for 20 plus years. Very few team members are expert with the latest technology. 50% budget goes to maintain the existing product. It can be bugs, issues, enhancement requests from the current customer base, etc. New development investment is always challenging. Company has decided to adapt agile transformation project to address these challenges. Challenges include how we can migrate faster to the latest technology for expanding market? What should be the strategy company can take to address such situation? How technology migration and upgradation should happen? How to address the existing customer base? Competitor has already launched similar solution with the cutting, cutting edge technology. As a scrum master, how can you help the team members? What will be your few action steps you will take to start with? What is your engagement model and plan? This is all about uh, the case study friends. So we will be seeing how I have tried to address this case study in the future slides. To start with, I have uh, segregated the uh, approach what I am using to solve this case study into different uh, section of topics. That is star technique, factors for modernization of legacy system, SWOT analysis, Pareto analysis, Scrum Master role in migration process, budgeting and migration plan. To address this case study, I have used certain approaches. The first technique is STAR technique. In any given situation, you can use STAR technique to answer your problem statements. So it is one of the best techniques that we can answer any scenario based questions during our interview. So situation here in this case study is 20 plus year old product, which is a cash cow product in European market that has to be migrated in two to three years timeline with cutting edge technologies. And what is task we have to do is legacy system migration, adopting agile transformation. There will be a action item from a company and as a role based, whether it can be developers or PO or scrum master, there will be a different action items for different roles. 
So from company perspective, it is like legacy system assessment should be carried out and there should, we have to do a thorough analysis why that migration is required, whether we have to rebuild the product, whether it is for a short term or long term. And as a scrum master, how we have to handle this migration project. So we will look into that roles and responsibilities of scrum master in the upcoming slides. But however, at high level, we need to know how we can coordinate or collaborate with our clients and stakeholders to understand the business needs. And also we can schedule calls with them to understand the existing system. What is that architecture and try to document all the assumptions before we migrate. So result of all these things will be the product that is built with the latest feature. This flow diagram will give you an overall picture of the migration process from legacy system to the new system. For example, we have to gather all the required inputs or business requirements from our client or end user before starting the migration process. We have to identify what is the need for the migration of the process, or whether we have to rewrite the code or it is just a, a shift and lift or upgradation or we are just uplifting the environment. So we need to understand the requirement. And once we have understood all these things and have uh, required inputs, we have to define what is that management approach should follow during this migration process, whether we are doing it in a phase wise and how or when the our release should be uh, rolled out this all approaches should be planned well in advance. We have seen in the third slide when we went about uh, the case study challenges, how we can migrate faster to the latest technology. So from the company's end, or uh, we have to first identify or define the product goal or we have to have a clear vision of what the business requirement is and what is that we are generating for business and how uh, the migration process will be carried out with the help of the certain roles like developers or scrum masters PU and we have to understand the existing existing system properly before our migration process and what should be the strategy to address this uh, migration processes we have to first carry out the legacy system assessment with try to collect the required data from the existing solution and we have to find a uh, we have to plan for a strategy where we have to see whether it is the enhancement that is required for the migration and what is that improvement and growth we are going to contribute or uh, that will be generated because of this migration process, whether we are rebuilding our software and uh, how we replace the existing software with the new baseline system that is built. And once this rollout is happened, how we are planning our uh, retirement of the existing system also will be maintained and how once we are pushing the new system to the production support, how we are going to train our personnel and how we are going to plan our future upgrades. So this all will be considered and we need to plan it accordingly. If we have to see how that migration or the upgradation should happen and we need to understand why this upgradation or migration should happen because we know it is a, if it is a outdated or the technology if you are using maintenance cost will be very high that is already uh, discussed in our problem statement. So why we have to migrate is because of the better performance and reliability and also it will reduce the maintenance cost and have higher security standard. So how we can do it is we have to have as is infrastructure I mean to see as is uh, design document ready and also the to be uh, design document where what are the things we are going to change and how we are will be doing. So all these needs to be documented in the design document. Once we are having the things in place or documented with all our assumptions, uh, we need to see how we can address our uh, existing customer base or how we are going to handle our uh, competitors. When there is a similar feature that our competitors are going to launch, we need to uh, be ready like um, how uniquely we can uh, build that feature and what is that uh, our customer is looking forward. So we need to deliver the outcomes in the business requirements or the growing uh, like market trends. In these slides, we'll be discussing about few factors for the modernization of the legacy system. The first one is SWOT analysis. 
we'll be looking at what SWOT analysis is, what are the benefits of SWOT analysis in depth in the upcoming slide. So the second factor include cost and benefit analysis. How the replacement or the migration process, what is that budgeting or what is the available fund for this migration process in terms of maintenance or in terms of rewriting the code will also come into the picture. And the other factors are return on investment. What is that manpower efforts, how that upgradation of underlying uh, hardware or uh, software that also will uh, come into picture here. And other major important factor we need to consider is risk and time constraint. Whether our customer is very aggressive uh, with the tight timelines, whether they want it in two to three year timelines, or what is that uh, if the timelines are like pre-pond or postponed in terms of uh, delivery, or what is that risk, whether it is a known issue, known risk, or if it is unknown risk, how we are going to tackle that uh, risk management, we are doing it. And also what in terms of documentation and migration tools, how we are going to capture. So these are the few factors that uh, we can categorize for the modernization of legacy system. I have used SWOT analysis approach here to address my case study. So SWOT stand for strength, weakness, opportunities and threats. So for my case study, I have tried to categorize what are the strengths and what are the weakness and what will be the opportunities and threats I have tried to differentiate and then uh, so that it will be easy for me to address uh, the case study and how I will try to give a solution for my problem statement which uh, we discussed in our star technique. So I have listed few strengths here based on the case study. We know that it is uh, already a cash cow product means it will be a created a brand in the market already with a loyal customer base. This is the one of the biggest strength I can tell. And second thing is company as team members with organization who is associated for more than 20 years. So when we have a team member who is known of end to end about the exist, existing system, it will be very easy for us to handle the migration process because we can when we are onboard any new team member, we can try to pair them with the existing uh, team members and have a better so that they are having the shared understanding about the existing system and what we need to deliver or build for the uh, new system. And the other strength I can say is we have a development center in Germany and uh, they, we also have 35 members there and testing center in India with the uh, 20 team members. So. Out of these team members, it, we can know that uh, in the case study, it means they are like 50% of 50% uh, of the team are already aware of the latest technology. So these are the added advantages I have tried to list on for uh, the case study. When I move to weakness, it is like 50% uh, of the budget goes in the maintenance for the existing product. It can be in terms of bugs, issues, enhancement, where team is more focused to resolve the defect what is that uh, been arised for that uh, existing system and other disadvantage or the weakness I can see team is uh, like the product is being used with the outdated technology we know because of maintenance cost and if the system performance is very low the like the product uh, performance is very low we will not be able to it will not be functioning as expected other weaknesses since this is a old product and now we are trying to move to agile way of working changing people mindset it is not a weakness but it will take time uh, people who are in a waterfall model changing their mindset to agile way of working will take time so this is one weakness and as a scrum master how i will tackle or how I will coach my team member to with the facilitation of the scrum events will lie as a scrum master responsibility. SWOT analysis uh, will help you to identify the areas of your business that are performing well and what is the area where we have to improve. So previous slide we have seen strength and weakness which are the internal factors. Now we will be looking into opportunities and threats. If possible, friends, try to arrange all these four parameters in the quadrants or in a side-by-side -side column wise. But here I have made uh, in a different slides. So I will be discussing about opportunities now.
for my case study when we are creating any project or when we have to meet any customer demands what is that opportunities that will be evolving first thing for the organization it will be creating a business in terms of revenue or for uh, creating a new opportunities for employee in the project along with which uh, employees will get an opportunity to evolve their learnings and you know technology wise they can upskill themselves and other opportunity is so far the team was working in waterfall model approach and now they will be uh, shifting to the agile development or agile transformation with the new product built it will be easy for expanding to us market which was earlier in our uh, case study if you had seen it was very uh, difficult and it was a show stopper because of the outdated technology with the new opportunity it will be very easy and what are the threats is if there is uh, increasing competition in the market uh, with when our competitors are releasing the same uh, features or they are launching the same type of product so how we will try to match up that market value and how we are uh, analyzing like we have to understand the customer trends that are changing and how we can try to uh, compete with our competitors and what are the new policies or reg uh, regulations that will potentially impact our product or the operations this analysis needs to be made uh, well in uh, before advance so that uh, our migration process will be easy in this slide we will be talking about budgeting and few factors or few parameters which are considered in budgeting includes labor cost project equipment and material cost travel cost it can include office supplies or equipment and travel cost project management software cost etc labor cost is when we are onboarding any new person so what is that we will be billing for that person and whether that contract is fixed or whether that is a, a monthly contract or how that and all uh, will not be in scope of a scrum master but knowing the financial uh, thing will uh, be a added benefit we will move to next slide in this slide we will be talking about what pareto analysis is that is also known as 80 by 20 principle before starting with what pareto analysis is just to re just a recap or we will recall what swot analysis is so it will be providing the strength weakness opportunities threats so by gathering a lot of information it, we will be having like uh, it will be generating too many ideas but we will not know what is useful to us and it will not help us in any decision making or it will not provide any solutions we will not know what to prioritize but using pareto analysis it will be easy for us to list the cause and rank the issues whatever we are facing in our case study i have tried to categorize or prioritize top two problems in our case study that is one is the outdated technology because of which the maintenance cost is high for the project and uh, it is impacting our budget second thing is agile transformation it, that can that i have considered as an opportunity also which is considered as weakness also so these are the top two problems which i would like to get uh, figure it out using pareto analysis once we know how uh, what is the priority or what is the root cause for our problems then we have to take the required action for our issues whether it is migration project or any it or non it project roles and responsibilities of a scrum master remains the same what we are trying to convey here is during the modernization project what are the things that scrum master should keep in mind so that the transformation process will be easy or there is much uh, there is not uh, much blockers or obstacles in the journey so few things what i have categorized here is discovery assessment planning phase enablement when i said discovery assessment as a scrum master we need to spend time with existing team members and understand what the process and tools they are using and what is the deliverables we will be uh, committing with in terms of sprint and we need to understand what is the assumption before the migration process and how we can uh, set up our project will there be any uh, training sessions or any other setups uh, 
any team member will be who is the point of contact. So all this information needs to be gathered. Once we get all these inputs, we need to coach the team to adapt how to respond to change since they are in a waterfall model approach. And for each step, we need to create the entry and exit criteria, like how we have acceptance criteria. For each step, it will be useful if we create these criteria. Based on these inputs, we need to plan our uh, sprint. We have to determine what is the sprint length or duration which is best suitable for our project, whether it is one week sprint, two week sprint, and three week sprint. Since it is mentioned in case study that we need a shortest feedback cycle, for my case study, I would uh, refer that I will be going with two week sprint. And uh, once we have all these inputs and parameters, we need to work with uh, product owner uh, to understand and create the backlogs. So we need to have what is the releases and how we are going to uh, release the features and what is the goal and uh, scope of the product what we are going to build. After planning, we have to identify and uh, planning things. We have to train the Scrum team with the basic uh, workshops like uh, in terms of Scrum process, Scrum framework, and along with the technology trainings, we have to train the team and we have to coordinate with other Scrum master who has worked on a migration project earlier so that we can understand what is that real time scenario that Scrum Master might have faced and based on his experience or learning experience, we can try to avoid a few obstacles in our path or in our journey. So we have to categorize what went well or what did not work for that uh, migration project so that we can take extra actions when we are doing it for our project. Once we have gathered the required input and have the product backlog in place, which is prioritized and hardened, we have to start the sprint, uh, maybe for the team to be familiar with the uh, product ecosystem, we can start creating the spikes so that uh, as a group activity team can have all the project uh, softwares that is required and with respect to infrastructure, they can set up the project and they can get the code checkouts and get it imported in their local systems. So we have to see what is the blockers during this process. Like if there is any issues when they are trying to download or like when they are trying to import the project, how we can deal with that, um, whether the existing team member or there any is there any point of contact who can support the team when there is any issues or challenges during this infra setup. Once everything is done and so a sprint is running as expected, we also need to um, have the rollout plan. As discussed, release plan will help us so that it will give a clear understanding when we will be delivering what. So it is very much important as a Scrum Master that we run all the Scrum events effectively and we have uh, proper Agile metrics in place so that we can capture the team's progress and also the project progress and we will be able to uh, run the transformation project successfully without any issues. This is just a sample release plan uh, which I have uh, included in this slide, uh, friends. So from, they have actually mentioned the timelines as two to three years, but now here I have considered year as one year. Maybe for this, just for your reference and I have tried to provide my solution, you can always go with uh, the planning, whatever you have for your project needs. So what is that I will, I have categorized into two or four different uh, things. That is front end, back end, QA and release. So these things, what are the each uh, separate task I have just mentioned under front end, back end. Uh, for QA, what is that? Whether it is like one quarter we'll be taking for front end, one quarter for back end, or whether we are running it in parallelly. So we have to make these decisions or discussions within the team and uh, plan our release accordingly. And it is very much important once we launch our uh, project, we need to monitor our reviews and then take um, necessary action, whether uplift, like upgrading, providing like any upgradation in the system is required or not. In this slide, I'm talking about an example. This is not part of our case study, but I've had it here to share my experience because I was part of application migration project uh, once. The requirement was 
to migrate all the applications from tool A to tool B. How we did this or how we uh, accomplished this my, um, migration process successfully was we created milestone. What is that we used to deliver in the first month or what is that date wise and the month wise we had that project plan created and we got it uh, signed off from in terms of SOW we try, got it signed off from our customer that these are the things we will be delivering in this month and we took that acceptance from them. So before we start we gathered the required data what is we created inventory with the, what is the list of applications that our system is supporting that existing system is including and what is the list of users that is um, tagged with the tool A and how we can do this uh, migration in terms of uh, phase wise whether it will be uh, region specific or it will be a global uh, deployment. So we plan all this and we have a release plan created also. Once our release plan was created, we had uh, uh, like we had a checklist where we created all the packages and tested how that package will respond in the test environment. Once it, it was successful, we used to deploy it for the pilot users. Based on the compliance or the successful ratio, we deployed that packages or the application to the end user machine in phases. Maybe in the first wave we selected these many users and the second wave we selected these many users. And if something was not working as expected during our deployment, we had a rollback plan and we used to revert back all our deployments. By doing this in phase wise, uh, one advantage was if something goes wrong, we can revert back very easily instead of doing the global deployment. With all our release plan, all our milestone and all our date uh, planned properly, we could be able to deliver all the, we could uh, complete the migration process successfully and deployed all the applications in the new environment, I mean to say new tool without any much uh, blockers or the obstacles. Thanks for watching this video. Friends, please do share your feedbacks and input in the comment section. It will help me and other Scrum Master to understand what is the approach or technique you followed for any case study or for this kind of uh, real-time scenario, how you approached or what is that uh, you did to tackle this kind of situation. Thank you, Sunan, for giving me this opportunity and for all your support throughout my journey. Thank you, Career Stock.